Hey everybody, today's travel day. We call it getaway day. We're at Target Field wrapping up a homestand. We're heading to Miller Park and we're gonna get an inside look at what it takes to move the twins to Milwaukee. Starts with Hootie right here. Give him our luggage. What's going on, Dustin? How are you this morning? Hey, we're we, good. Looks like we got a little bit, uh, it's about 9.15, 9.30 in the morning and guys are starting to show up. About how many bags do we travel with? Yeah, we travel with about 30, 40 of these personal carrying cases. You know, I know the key is speed. We want to get things as organized as possible, get out ahead of it. So that's step one is getting the personal stuff loaded. And when does this truck head to the airport? This truck will leave to the airport right around when the game starts here. So then, you know, we'll finish up the game. Guys will get on their flight. And by the time they get there, this will already be at the hotel. You're heading inside. How was your morning today? Good. I literally just woke up. Anything unique in that suitcase on this trip? Yes, but nothing I'd like to disclose <laughs> publicly. Yeah. Any, anything unique in that bag? No. No, honestly, just clothes. Uh, I bring my own pillow on the road because the hotel pillows are always different. I'm probably the only one who's going to have a suitcase with a suit in it. So really the only noticeable difference at this point in the day is the travel bags in front of everybody's locker. So as the day goes on, everything will be loaded into those duffel bags. And it's jerseys, it's gloves, it's tennis shoes, it's cleats. And it's the clubhouse staff's job that when those bags are zipped up, they're ready to go. And they move it to the truck. The truck heads to the airplane. The sooner we get out of here, the sooner we get to Milwaukee. I'm probably the classic case of an overpacker. I got two pairs of runners and two pairs of cleats. I'm um, always kind of the thought of what happens if some, something breaks. Sure. Uh, so I kind of double pack everything. Even, you know, we get to go to Milwaukee, so I got to double pack batting gloves, which I was gonna no say. pitcher ever double packs batting gloves, but they take care of us pretty good. So, you know, when we show up to the park, our bags are already halfway packed, so they just leave our road jerseys, road pants in the bag. They don't even take them out when we get home from the road. So yeah, everybody pitches in because it's kind of a big well oiled machine. It's about the fourth or fifth inning right now we start the pack up process we're down in the weight room right now with with ian kadish Ian, just what are some of the essentials we take on the road yes yeah, so we take a lot of small stuff um try to take you know things that i think visiting weight rooms won't have foam rolls as well as like supplements and then we have a smaller one that you know we'll put in a set of chains um some some sleep that we'll give our guys after the game to help them sleep at night all right, so we're just wrapping things up here at Target Field. You've seen a lot of gear coming in and coming out. We're loading this truck up. It's almost done. We're going to head over to the airport and meet up with Mike Herman, our travel director, who's working on the next phase. So we're out here at the plane, and we have all the personal bags here that were originally brought to Target Field this morning. The baseball equipment will show up about an hour and a half after the game, but in the meantime, they'll load the personal bags on the plane, so that takes one of the steps out of the process as we get ready to depart Minneapolis. This aircraft has 72 first-class seats, and the players all sit in zones one and two. We happen to be standing in zone one right now. This table right here is typically Jorge Polanco, Eddie Rosario, Jonathan Scope, and Marwin Gonzalez, and they pass their time on our flights by playing games of dominoes. Some guys are routine-oriented when we travel. For instance, Byron Buxton sits here every flight, and every flight he has a cheeseburger and a Sprite. And right next to him, Max Kepler. Max always sits next to Byron on these flights. Usually I'll watch a movie or two. Uh, today's a shorter flight, so uh, we might just have a little conversation with the boys and, and uh, you know, get ready to get to the next city. Players are slowly starting to arrive. You also have some things on the other end to worry about. Check-in times tonight potential dinner reservations. What's going through your mind right now? Well, right now what I'm doing is just keeping everybody on the other end updated as to when we might arrive. That's the equipment trucks, the buses, and also the visiting clubhouse manager in Milwaukee. I'm a Mr. Milk Dead guy, but I know Mike... Uh, Green tea. Probably going to watch Pitch Perfect again, aren't you? Hey, I might have to. We'll see you in Milwaukee. All right, Mike, so we just got to the hotel. Looks like the first order of business is to get everybody checked in and get their key packets. Everything smooth on your end? Everything smooth. There were enough key packets for all the guys that came off those buses. They all went up to their rooms, and now they're bringing in the, the suitcases. It'll then be brought up to the rooms where people will come down and grab them themselves. So looking forward to playing some baseball. We'll go to the ballpark and watch a unpack with the equipment that went over to the ballpark. So we'll see you at Miller Park. All right, so we've successfully landed here in Milwaukee, and we're at Miller Park. It's about seven hours before game time. We're doing a little bit of a checklist to make sure everything showed up. So you can see the Twins radio equipment has arrived. We've got 
our TV trunk, uh, the catching gear. We've got our equipment trunk, the, the jerseys, the extra lettering kits, and then just the essentials, the bats and the balls and everything that are in the back of the equipment room here at Miller Park in the visiting clubhouse. And the home team supplies all the Gatorades and waters and things like that. It's really just checking to make sure all the Twins gear is here. So when I first show up uh, to the field for the first game of the series, I typically go around to every locker and make sure that each guy has his designated jerseys and pants. As far as the locker positioning uh, is usually determined by service time. So you got guys like Kyle Gibson here. He's got more service time. He'll have an empty locker next to him. So it's all about making the players comfortable and making sure all the gear has arrived. There's a lot of little things that go into it, and it's pretty similar to their locker at Target Field. We have one of these at home, it's called a hydroculator. All the visiting clubhouses will have one as well. Basically, it's hot water with clay-filled pouches on the inside, so if you want to open up one of the uh, covers, all we do is we take one out, put one in the cover, close it up, and then generally, what guys will do is we'll grab a towel as well because it can get pretty hot, and we'll wrap it onto a body part, lay it on their low back, whatever area they're trying to get a little warmer, a little looser for their uh, pre-game activities or for the game itself. So now you've seen it. You've seen a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to move the Minnesota Twins from Minneapolis to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to take on the Brewers for a two-game series. It takes a lot of people, it takes a lot of organization, and a lot of efficiency. But guess what? With the two-game series, we get to do it all over again tomorrow.